Hi, my name is Valerie, and I'm a lab instructor with Memorial University. In today's lab, I will show you a simple experiment designed to show how and why yeast can be used in the production of leavened bread, beer, and wine because of yeast's ability to undergo fermentation. As stated in the lab document, because of this ability to undergo fermentation, yeast has been used for centuries in the production of beer, wine, and leavened bread. Fermentation is the production of ethanol by yeast and occurs when yeast is deprived of oxygen, so it cannot carry out aerobic respiration. The equation for fermentation is on the board behind me, but it's also in the lab document. So basically, it's the, uh, or the breakdown of glucose into ethanol and carbon dioxide gas. In today's lab, I will do a simple experiment showing you what uh, is required by yeast in order to undergo fermentation. So before I set it up, I just want to show you some of the equipment that I'll be using. Here are boiling tubes. There's actually three of them. So these are labeled A, B, and C. So boiling tubes are basically large test tubes. I also have three test tubes, also labeled A, B, and C. Connecting the boiling tubes to the test tubes will be these three rubber stoppers with connected rubber tubing. So once it's all set up, we'll see how that is, is going to work. To weigh out the yeast, this is the yeast that I'll be using, I will use this weight scale right here. Okay, so I'll weigh out the yeast using that. The chemicals I'll be using, uh, I'll also be using distilled water, uh, but I'll also be using 5% glucose, which is right here as well as bicarbonate indicator. Later on, I'll explain why we're using bicarbonate indicator. To measure out the liquids, I will use these graduated cylinders. Okay, so I'm gonna set it up, explain how it's set up, and run the experiment, and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is the setup. So, yeah, I'm gonna fix it a little bit. Go. Uh, three large boiling tubes, three small test tubes, and three rubber stoppers with attached tubing are seen right here. The boiling tubes were labeled A, B, and C. To tubes A and B, 25 milliliters of 5% glucose was added. 25 milliliters of distilled water was added to tube C. Each of those three small test tubes were filled with 10 mils of bicarbonate indicator. Remember from lab eight that bicarbonate indicator can be used to indicate if carbon dioxide has been added to it or removed from it because it'll change color. It is normally this reddish brown color that you see right here, but it will become purple if carbon dioxide is removed from it and yellow if carbon dioxide is added to it. So, by using bicarbonate indicator, we can determine if the yeast is undergoing fermentation because CO2 is a byproduct of fermentation and could change the color of the bicarbonate indicator if carbon dioxide is given off. One gram of yeast has been added to tubes A and C, weighing it out with the balance like I showed you before. Each of those tubes was swirled to ensure the yeast was well mixed within the liquid. The rubber stoppers were placed in each of the boiling tubes, making sure that the rubber stoppers uh, fit tightly and the attached tubing was placed into the test tubes, as you see right here. Using the color of the bicarbonate indicator shown here, as well as the photo of this initial setup that will be given in the lab document, record the contents of each tube and the initial color of the bicarbonate indicator in the test tubes in the table associated with this exercise on the assignment worksheet. The yeast that's in the tubes now will need five minutes to become active. During this activation period, 
bubbles of carbon dioxide should be released into the bi biochemical indicator, which will indicate that the yeast is alive and active. Think about the contents of the bo each boiling tube. Which one or ones would you expect bubbles to be produced in and why? Why shouldn't bubbles come out of the other ones? Okay, so this setup has now been here for 30 minutes after the five minute activation period. Uh, the color of the bicarbonate indicator is clearly seen here, but I'll also take a picture and that will be posted in the lab document. Um, so what you need to do uh, from the photo and also as you can see here, you need to record the final color of the bicarbonate indicator in each test tube in the table associated with the exercise on the assignment worksheet. You can also see from tube A that it's very frothy, uh, meaning that it has produced a lot of bubbles, whereas the other two don't really show anything in terms of bubbles. Okay, so I hope this demonstration will help you understand why yeast is, why yeast is used in certain food production. If you have any questions, contact the lab instructors as per usual.